So the other day I decided that I wanted to play some games on my Atari 5200. And as you may or may not know, the controllers on the 5200 are some of the worst ever. And a lot of times they just don't work. So I thought I would go ahead and take one of these apart and see if I could get it working again. And hopefully you enjoy this chronicling <laughs> of me uh, trying to fix my Atari 5200 controller. All right, so here's my controllers. One of them was kind of working a little bit there. Uh, you know, I'd hit the start button and it would the game would start and I was playing and everything. And, and the other one, it wouldn't work. So And then after a bit, when I was hitting the button, it still was not consistent. So I said, well, you know, I might as well just go ahead and tear them down and clean the contacts. So I've got my screwdriver here to open it up. I've got some Q-tips here. Uh, and I got some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You know, I could probably use contact cleaner. Um, I just don't want to go to the store and get it. And it should work fine. I've, I've done this many times before with like cartridges and things. So this should work just fine. All right, so it looks like we got three screws here on the back. Let's go ahead and open this up. Oh, wow. Man, that's like 35 years worth of screw tightness there. All right, now that the screws are off, let's see what happens when we pop this bad boy open here. I'm sure there's some clips here on the side or on the front or the back or something to keep it from coming loose. But seriously, those screws were tight enough. I don't think they really have to worry about any of that. I'm kind of concerned about this front piece here. I'm afraid I'm gonna clean that dirt off there. I'm afraid I'm gonna break, the, if there's any kind of tab, I'm afraid I might break that off. So I gotta be really careful opening this thing up. Here on the side, you can kind of see the flex circuit uh, starting to rear itself and it looks remarkably clean already. Doesn't look too bad at all. Of course, the start button is the one that's causing me problems and that's gonna be that's probably that one right there. All right, so I'm gonna use the flathead attachment here to my screwdriver. And I think if I just stick that in here and just twist it, it should just like pop right open there. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Whoa, I'll take that off of there. And that really looks clean, doesn't it? Man, now my wife got this uh, 5200 for me on eBay several years ago, probably more than like 10 or 15 years ago. And I, you know, I haven't played it a whole heck of a lot and it doesn't appear that the original owner played it very much either. So I guess I got a pretty good, uh, pretty good one here. That looks, looks interesting. It's like a reverse joystick there. <laughs> and then of course you got your uh, number pad here and there's little carbon pads here on the back that make the, uh, the connection when you're pushing the buttons. So my problem is these connectors right here, the start button, the pause button, and the, the option button there. But you know, I, I don't really use option that much, but it's this one. That's the one I need to figure out why isn't it working consistently. It could also be the start button itself uh, may not be making it a good connection here. This feeds through inside here like that and then makes a connection, so. I don't know. I guess I'll just try cleaning these off and, and we'll see if that uh, see if that makes a difference. Now, does anybody out there want to tell me that this is not the best way to do this? <laughs> Who wants to give, come on uh, in the comments and tell me that this is not the best way, this is not the best way to do this? Yeah, fortunately, it doesn't look like they're that, they're not that bad at all. They're not really all that dirty. I do hope it fixes it though, because it's kind of frustrating when you're trying to play a game and not doing anything. Eh, that wasn't too bad. I'm worried about uh, adjusting these too much. I'm afraid I'm gonna screw something up. I heard people say that if they didn't get the pentiometers set up right, that, it's not, that it doesn't work right. So I don't even know. I don't even understand how this thing works. Quite an interesting design here, actually, the way they did this with the 5200. All right, so I had a bit of a trouble trying to get this uh, piece off here. And really the only way to do it is to uh, wedge the screwdriver here right on the side and just pop it out. But it's down there pretty tight. So uh, I actually used my fingernail to get it started. And then I stuck the screwdriver in there and popped it loose so I could get in here and get to these buttons here, which I wanted to see if there was a way that this uh, these carbon buttons here, 
are not making a good contact. So I want to see if uh, maybe, I, maybe I can clean that up. Maybe that'll make it work a little bit better. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and try that. Of course, there is another way to ensure that this is gonna work better. And that's to take like uh, copper, you know, like a sheet of copper and just uh, wrap around uh, these little contacts so you make a much better contact. Or I think you can use like aluminum foil or something like that. But uh, I'm just gonna try cleaning these off and see if, see if that makes any difference. Also, while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and clean the uh, buttons to the side. This one just happened to pop off on its own, so it wasn't that hard to get off. This one here is just, it just sits in there pretty easy. Oh, I should do the, should do the side buttons too. I think I got these on the side already, but just thought I'd do it again for good measure. And while I'm at it, I might as well do the uh, pads for the number pad, pads for the pads. Of course, as far as I know, this might actually be making it worse. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll try it later once I'm done. All right, now before I go ahead and put all this back together again, I thought I would uh, test it and see if it uh, see if it made any difference. All right, turns on just fine. Just good. Just never had a problem with that so far. All right, now I'm just gonna take the pad here and just touch it and see if it uh, actually starts. It worked. Cool. Of course, I can't do anything <laughs> with it like this, but I hit reset. Reset works. I should do pause. Pause works. All right, well, I don't know if that did anything, actually cleaning that up, because like I said, these uh, the circuit was already pretty clean to begin with, and maybe it was maybe it was the, the pads on the back needed to be cleaned a little bit, but hey, it seems to work good. Now comes the hard part in trying to get this uh, crazy thing back together again. All right, well, my little test worked, but what I, one thing that I discovered is that if you just gently push on it, it doesn't work. But you have to really give it a, a real strong squeeze before that actually works. I guess in the future when I'm trying to play the games, trying to start them, I'll make sure that I, I push down on the button with enough force to make that connection. Now the hard part is how am I gonna get this thing back together again? I don't even know how this is gonna work with this thing. It's never really a big fan of the uh, 5200 buttons, they're just like rubber. Uh, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. It should just go in there just like that, should be fine. Same thing with this guy. I'm sure this won't be the last time I'm trying to get these to fit in here. It's not a bad design, I guess. It's pretty cool. The hard part's gonna be putting this in here. I think I should put it in like this first. but I have to go over top to lock it into place. Which fortunately that just clicks right in there, not too bad. See, and now that I've got that in there that way, this little flex circuit thing should, if I get this lined up right, should just slide right back in there. Imagine trying to assemble these in the, uh, the factory. It must have been a real pain in the butt. I would have loved to have seen the instructions at Atari on how to put these together. What seems to be happening is that as I'm flipping this over, this whole uh, joystick assembly kind of thing is becoming misaligned and it's very difficult to get it to sit in properly like this, which it's not supposed to be like this at all. All right, let's try it. Let's try start. Yes, start works. Does the joystick still work? Uh... I don't think so. I think I screwed, I must've screwed something up. Dang it, I can feel it. It's not wanting to go to the left. Well, how about pause? Pause work, yep. Reset, that works. Well, at least the buttons work. I just gotta work on this joystick issue. What the heck? All right, so I think what's happening is I, I had this white piece here was not aligned properly. It was, it was like sideways like this, but I'm pretty sure it needs to go vertically like this, now, like that. And I think this little tab here has to connect into that tab there, and that one has to connect into that little black one here. So this might be challenging trying to line these up when you can't even see what the heck you're doing. All right, now that I've got it back together a second time, um, hopefully the right orientation of those uh, plastic pieces in there uh, will make this work better. I can already tell that's it's much, better than before. Hopefully I lined up those tabs properly, assuming that is what I needed to do. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Hit start, nice, hit pause, hit reset. 
I'm not having to jam it too hard, that's nice. And the test to see if the joystick works. Looks like it worked at least as good as it did before, <laughs> anyway, as much as that is the buttons work. Yeah, it looks like the buttons work. That's probably a good game to test this on. Ah. All right, well, there you have it. That's my experience in taking apart and trying to fix my Atari 5200 controller. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Take care, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.